Hey guys, 420 Scene here. Thanks for stopping by and chilling with me. I hope everyone watching is having themselves a super fire, super fly, stony day. Let me know what you're token on and where you watch the video from. I always like to know. Should have dropped that fat like, subscribe, and if you want access to all my secret, unlisted grow and smoke videos, our super fire Discord community, or if you want to get some one on one grow help, check us out on Patreon, guys. I'm going to have the link in the upper right hand corner over here. If you guys are wondering what's over there, it is exactly what you think. Think it is it's really hot as fuck in here okay unfortunately i had to cover it up because youtube is really weird even if you're trying to show a germ kit but Shh. All right, so it's not exactly balls to the face hot out. Okay, well maybe in this very room it is, but we've been getting some 60 and 70 degree days lately, and I don't know about you guys, but that's what I like to call drop top weather. Been driving the convertible, man, definitely good times, you know what I mean? Doing that nice burn ride, drop top, let that wind go at your hair, man. It's like getting the massage, bro, like gotta try it, man. That's the good part about the warmer weather, but unfortunately, it's also heat stress weather as well, and it does remind me that summer is on its way, and it's one of the roughest times for us indoor runners depending on of course it really depends on where you live but like so my goal for today is to give you guys some really solid tips on how to keep your grow nice and cool so you don't get bone straight man with that heat stress one of the biggest and most effective tips that's going to drop your tent by at least a solid four to five degrees is something that i mentioned i think it was last summer i think it was either last summer or the summer before that but it's when i was running that four foot by eight foot tent in the studio remember when I was shooting those summer grow vlog videos and literally my remember like my backdrop was the tent that's when we had the studio facing the opposite way so right where we we're filming that's where the tent was but the backdrop was a straight up four by eight foot tent like it was taking up the entire backdrop I couldn't get the temps under 82 degrees if my life depended on it and I had the AC set for the lowest possible setting which is 62 degrees but it wasn't really doing anything and then I decided to try to push that cool air from my studio to the tent so everybody has bottom ventilation holes on each side of their tent right i mean i've never seen one that doesn't have them if anybody is rocking a tent that's i don't know somehow doesn't have bottom ventilation holes telling you right now ditch that shit and get a better one i don't think there's a tent that exists that doesn't have bottom ventilation holes like i'd be amazed if something like that exists but anyway what you want to do is you want to get a box fan and put it towards the outside of your tent but you want to make sure that it's pointing towards the tent and what's going to happen is that cool air that's in your room it's going to end up getting pushed into your grow area and what's really good is that it not only like not only is it going to keep it cool but it's a great way to just constantly keep recycling your air so you're pushing air from the bottom of your grow setup and you're exhausting that hot air that's getting pulled from your carbon filter and your inline fan so you're constantly recycling that airflow on top of you being able to cool down your grow during super hot months that are coming up and for some of you it's already hot so on top of that you're maintaining a really good environment and the whole point is to try to emulate the outside world as best you can and obviously nothing is going to compare to just running outside but if you can keep recycling that air you're setting yourself up for having really good environmental conditions as far as the air ventilation is concerned my tent at the time went from being 82 degrees all the way down like 75 76 degrees which trust me that makes a world of difference four or five six degrees you know as long as you stay in the 70s you're perfectly fine like that's always kind of been my golden rule just stay in the 70s i don't care if it's 71 i don't care if it's 79 obviously kind of want to drop it a little bit lower than 79 but if you can't help it if you're just stuck at like 78 79 then you're golden you're perfectly fine you got nothing to worry about now i know someone in the comment section is gonna make that classic comment of yeah um i've run my ladies outside when it was in the mid 80s so what are you talking about <sighs> You're comparing a wide open outside area to an enclosed indoor setup. We're not the same. 85 degrees outside and 85 degrees inside. It's just not the same thing. So let's not even have that conversation, okay? I already know someone in the comment section a long time ago said something crazy like that. And I don't know, Just it's just not the same, all right? When I was doing my outdoor runs back in 2017, we've had some days where it was in the night, like 90 degrees, 95 degrees, and they were perfectly fine. It's still not the same thing because there's constant airflow moving and you're pretty much just like a wide open area so that's why it's not the same thing so guys stop comparing the outdoor temperature with the indoor temperature but keeping that box fan on the outside of your tent pushing that cooler air into your tent is without a doubt going to be the best way to handle any sort of incoming heat stress this next tip i'm going to give you it can come off as a little bit controversial and i know it's going to be controversial and honestly I, I don't really give a flying fuck because it works for me and i know a lot of people talk about co2 and how it does or doesn't yield you more i can't really speak on that 
that because that's not the reason I use CO2. So let's just say that you're, you've exhausted all your options and you just can't drop your temperature. Like you just can't drop it low enough. It's still stuck in the eighties. Maybe you live in an insanely hot area of the country like Arizona or New Mexico or Texas or Brazil. <laughs> Yo, if you know, you know. But seriously, if you can't bring down your temperature because of where you live, the next step is to maybe adapt your ladies so that way they can handle and endure the heat a little bit better. That's where the CO2 comes in. And I've been using those, you know those exhale bags? Remember I was using them like a summer or two summers ago? Those exhale two bags, I mean, they work really good. And the way you wanna set it up is by hanging it just a little bit higher than your ladies. Don't put it on the floor. Don't put it on the corner of your setup. Don't put it like sky high, all right? You guys gotta be tactical here. Strategize a little bit where you're gonna be putting your CO2 bags at. That's what I did and I mean, it's been like super effective for me. And there were times where it got really hot and my AC just wasn't working that well. So I had to act quickly and get some of those exhale CO2 bags. I heard a lot of good stuff about them and I'm gonna be for real with you guys, like for real, for real, all right? I wasn't getting any sort of heat stress, which was pretty weird because I'm used to having my stuff in the 70s, but because we were running those exhale CO2 bags in there and I was a little sketch if it was gonna work. Like, I don't know. I feel like everybody's kind of like that when they first start something new or try to do a trial and error or some kind of experimentation like with CO2 bags or whatever it may be. I'm telling you, they were able to handle the heat stress just fine. And also another quick tip on the CO2 bags, if you're trying to extend the life of those exhale bags, every so often start kind of like crumbling it up or just punch in the bag a little like I, I don't know I saw some videos of people doing that to help extend the life a little bit so that's what I did and I think I did get a couple more weeks out of it I mean it's really hard to really compare because it's not like you know it's not like something you could visually see like okay it's done it was just really effective now as far as whether or not CO2 is going to give you a bigger yield and I trust me all right I understand I completely understand the logic behind it I can't really speak on it because there was never like that was never really my intent as far as using CO2 to be honest I always just get an excellent yield with or without it. So I don't really care about that to me. So I'm always, see the thing about me is like, I would rather just use a CO2 bag if it's just too hot and my AC just can't handle the heat. Like if it's just too hot, because there are some really insane days on the East Coast, like the Northeast where it just, we will get a hundred degree. Like it's the humidity also on top of it that kind of like gets really rough with the heat. But yeah, just throw one of those CO2 bags and you should be good for a solid few weeks. Like I think it's good for up to a month. I've heard people People say like four to six weeks, but I think for me, it's like four weeks. So after two weeks, I'd crumble the bag up and get another two weeks out of it. So it usually works about four weeks for me. I like to call that my escalated plan B option. Also for all you beginners out there, heat stress is really easy to figure out. Like once your leaves start to fold upward, like a taco or a boat, that's how you know you have heat stress. Like visually, it's the opposite of windburn. And I would say to add an exhaust system, but I feel like at this point, everybody already has an exhaust system. If you don't have an exhaust system, guys, what's wrong with you? get an exhaust system, all right? <laughs> summer's coming, I mean, even without the summer, like, it's all the smells out of there if you're, you know, trying to make your house not smell like Wiz Khalifa. Of course, having an exhaust system, you're gonna be running it a lot cooler, but like I said, I feel like everybody just has an exhaust system, and at the same time, even with an exhaust system, I don't think it's gonna completely solve your problems. Okay, so your setup is not gonna be 90 degrees, but now it's gonna be in 80 degrees, but you still kinda wanna drop it to the 70s, so that's why I like to add that air condition, you know, with the box fan, like, I feel Feel like that is by far the most effective way if you're trying to lower the temps in your grow setup and not get your ladies accustomed to the heat like the co2 is getting them accustomed to the heat getting the box fan to just blow in there i mean drop four or five degrees and you are solid that's always worked out for me and like i said though it really depends on your location but at least you have secondary options like the co2 bag also another really good tip if you're running those big bar style lights with a ballast like the ks 5000 or if you're running like the big hlg lights now I think like the Diablo I don't even know it's like the thousand watt whatever you know those big or even like the FC 4800 the FC 6500 keep the ballast on the outside of your tent that shit gets really hot and you don't need anything extra in your grow setup that's just gonna further add to heating up your space like that's just counterproductive so if anything just keep that on the outside of your setup and I feel like that's something that's overlooked by a lot of beginners not many people think that the ballast will cause that much heat because when you do set it up it doesn't really run hot right away 
way. After a day you touch it, it's gonna be super hot as fuck. I feel like that's something that's really overlooked and not many people think that the ballast is gonna just cause that much heat. But I mean, it's, I mean, it's hot to the touch, right? So you could only imagine that's gonna add a few more degrees in your grow space. So it doesn't even make sense to keep it in your setup if you're trying to exhaust all that heat. Trust me guys, it can get really tricky doing indoor runs during the summertime, especially if you live somewhere really hot with insane humidity like Florida, but with just a few minor adjustments, you should be able to get that perfect environment. Like I said throughout the video, there's a lot of different ways to either lower the temp in your grow setup or just adapt your lady so that way they can handle the heat a little bit more. And I think it's really good that you have both options out there because you can kind of make that determination. Like if you live like in Florida or Arizona and you're not gonna be able to drop down that heat all that much into the 70s, then obviously the best bet is gonna be to just run a CO2 bag in there and then you'll be fine with that. But if you live somewhere that's like, even in the Northeast, I mean, sometimes we do get those really hot as fuck days, but for the most part, it's like usually in the 80s, maybe maybe like mid 90s, maybe the upper 90s a couple of days. And you know, if you have something like that and you can drop that with the AC, just put a box fan in the ventilation hole and you're perfectly fine with that. And guys, I'm super blazed. Like I'm just going off the cuff right now, just like whatever, you know what I mean? But like, seriously, there's a lot of great options out there to cool down your grow. Just, you gotta do a little bit of research. If you guys have any other tips, totally drop it in the comment section below. So before we close out today's video, I wanna thank everyone on screen who's been supporting us on Patreon and for only 11 11.99 a month. You get access to all our secret unlisted grow and smoke videos like I said in the beginning of the video. You can follow along with our purple honey run from in-house. You get live streams. You get access to our VIP Discord community and you also get one-on-one -on -one grow help with me. So definitely check it out if that's something you're interested in. Plus it really helps support the channel. And everyone else, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more videos. And most importantly, make sure to turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. We might be coming out with a video on Sunday. I'm not sure yet. We're gonna we're gonna kind of just play it by ear, but expect a video for Tuesday, but you might get surprised with a Sunday video as well. So I hope everyone has a great rest of the day, and as always, stay safe. Peace.